Hello and warm welcome to everyone joining us for our webinar today. We are doing this webinar as a continuation of our big releases announcement in December. Before the winter break, our executives kicked off this webinar series discussing their insights into the market outlook and the phrased strategy for the coming months. And today we are following up with a second webinar where we want to introduce you to one of the main pillars of our December releases the phrase quality performance score or QPS as you're going to hear us call it throughout the webinar. So uh, phrase QPS is what we will be discussing today and it is going to be introduced by the most relevant speakers, our director of AI research, Craig Stewart and our product man marketing manager, Danish Garek. So now without further ado, I'll pass the mic to Dan, over to you. Hi, everyone. It's great to see all of you joining us today for a very exciting webinar, the first webinar of the year. Uh, we will be talking about uh, QPS today. So let's quickly take a look at the agenda to see what's, what's waiting ahead. First off, we'll start off with a general overview of what QPS is. Then I will hand over to Craig, who will share a little bit of inside information on the quality evaluation of phrase, how the AI team is thinking about this. Then we will talk specifically about the implementation of QPS in the phrase suite. We will follow this up with a practical demo showing you how it works in the phrase TMS and phrase strings. Then we'll take a forward look at what's next for QPS, and we will end today's session with a live Q&A. Uh, as Clara mentioned, if at any point during this presentation you have any questions, please go to slido.com, uh, hashtag QPS, and add your questions there. We'll try to address as many of them as possible at the end of today's session. So let's get started. The big question is what is QPS? Uh, as Clara already told us, QPS stands for Quality Performance Scores. Phrase QPS is designed to be an AI-driven capability to help you quickly and effectively assess translation quality. The intent of QPS is that it simplifies and enhances the process of translation review so that you don't have to worry about the slow and resource intensive process of traditional review. Uh, our intention with QPS is to provide you with instant quality insights. And the key is that they empower you to scale up your translations. So to give you slightly more specific information, I'd like to go over some of the key features. With phrase QPS, we rate all translations instantly on a score from zero to 100. This is done automatically using our own AI. The scores are available at a segment level in the TMS and strings, but also on a, on the document level through our phrase language AI API. The key here is accuracy. We've designed um, the QPS to be able to provide scores that accurately reflect human judgment. And to do so, we are leveraging the MQM 2.0 framework, which is something that Craig will be telling you about shortly. Um, our hope is that uh, these scores will prove to be reliable and uh, be able to closely replicate similar human judgment. One of the core tenets and one of the most exciting things about uh, QPS is that this is an AI release that doesn't affect just one, pro uh, one uh, product in the phrase suite, but a range of them. So QPS is now fully integrated in phrase strings, phrase TMS, and phrase language AI via API. Now, to give you a little bit more insights uh, about the thinking and the technology behind phrase QPS, I'd like to hand over to Greg. Thank you, Dan. Um, very nice to be here and, and lovely to see everybody uh, in the call. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of context of, of, of our thinking around quality evaluation and what's provoking or motivating us to, to come up with um, uh, QPS and introduce it into the product. So automated evaluation for us, quality evaluation is uh, at scale in particular, is the key to unlocking uh, fully automated and scalable localization workflows. We uh, understand and we anticipate that with the evolution of AI and in particular the introduction and the new wave of generative AI, uh, there's something of a wave of new content and the a volume of content that we have to uh, tackle in localization workflows is rapidly increasing. And more and more, we see the need to be able to scale operations to reach uh, across new language barriers in particular. And in, in, in order to do that, uh, we're very, very interested in, in providing mechanisms by which we can automate parts of the process. In particular, we understand that human evaluation, and we're very fond of, um, I myself has a, I have a, something of a background in translation, and um, I'm, I'm very fond of the human process. And we understand that to tackle that scaling of content and uh, translation and localization of content, 
we need to uh, help and refine the human process in particular to enable that human task to scale with the, the incoming scaling of content as well. So human evaluation, usually uh, we, we have LQA in our phrase platform uh, using MQM, and that is still a very attractive option. It's still fundamentally the best way to get good quality translation quality information about your, about your process and understand the value of your solution. But it is only scalable to an extent uh, and, and has trouble in accommodating much, much larger volumes that we're seeing. And usually your response to that, if you're a business interested in localization, if you want to try to automate things and automate the translation process, the one thing you might lean into um, quite a lot is machine translation. And that in particular, even with some of the new technologies that we're seeing emerging with uh, ChatGPT and LLMs, um, we, we're still not seeing MT reach a point that the, the problem is solved. Uh, we still we still understand that MT represents a risk if you want to put it in fully automated work, uh, localization workflows. And solutions that rely purely on MT in particular tend to be blind to this risk. So the whole uh, motivation behind what we're doing with QPS in particular is trying to lift the lid and provide transparency at scale uh, in order to uh, provide better transparency on, on translation quality and um, uh, refine that human process. Just to reflect on uh, the next slide, that um, the uh, success that we, we can expect in leveraging AI solutions in an attempt to automate these workflows, in particular, generative AI uh, falls under this umbrella as well, is really dependent on our ability to dynamically evaluate the utility of those solutions. And the whole goal of QPS is, is providing exactly that, that dynamic evaluation of solutions such that uh, customers can understand the value of what they're getting and how to make adjustments to it. The umbrella of what we're calling phrase quality technology, which includes QPS, the goal of this, as I've said, is to provide the transparency necessary for customers to optimize their localization operations at an acceptable risk for their use case. So we understand that we have customers, for example, we're very interested in generative AI and want to start generating content and, and translating using generative solutions. And in particular, uh, with the risks that those carry, we hope that QPS can provide a way of mitigating and understanding that risk. I want to talk on the next slide uh, a little bit about the, the background to the, the QPS scoring and our thinking around MQM because uh, there's some relevance to, 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 to MQM increasingly at the moment. And I understand that... Um, within uh, the guests in the, the webinar today, there's, there's a bunch of linguists and probably you don't need for me to explain to you what MQM is, but uh, bear with me for a moment for those of you who are not familiar. Uh, MQM is a the multi-dimensional quality metric framework. It was established as part of the QT21 uh, Launchpad uh, project by Al Lamel and others, um, and is becoming more commonly the central and most standardized way for humans to evaluate translation quality. The framework itself uh, it is, is used within and has been used within the phrase platform through our LQA platform uh, and allows reviewers to assess and identify and articulate uh, what, what type of errors they're seeing. So they can assign error categories to problems with the translation, such as grammar or punctuation or fluency, that kind of thing. And then they can also assign severities to those errors. So they can assign, for example, minor to suggest that the translation error is of a minor nature or critical uh, to indicate that there's a complete failure in the translation uh, by, by some, caused by some uh, error category. Those uh, severities are then used to calculate the score, which is usually, uh, and depending on the implementation, usually within the range of zero to 100 and can and provide then a, a visual as to the translation quality at the segment level or a document level and understanding that if you're close to 100, you have something that's very good. If you're closer to zero or beyond zero into the negatives for some uh, implementations, you have something that's of poor quality. And MQM is now becoming very, very quickly the industry standard for translation quality evaluation. More than that, uh, there's a lot of interest in the, uh, the AI community at the moment in leaning into MQM and away from methods and things like direct assessment as a, as a primary mechanism for understanding uh, translation quality and articulating translation quality using uh, automated methods. Um, and in the next slide, I wanted to touch on MTQE. MTQE was an existing framework that has been part of our platform for a few years now. And I wanted to just differentiate a little bit what QPS is and how it relates to uh, MTQE. So MTQE 
was, uh, before December, our quality estimation tool um, developed in-house, which attached quality labels, which were roughly aligned with the fuzzy match scoring bands, uh, things like 75, 95, 100, and zero, in the, to which would provided some kind of uh, very broad understanding of translation quality in, in, in the sense of uh, fuzzy match alignment. QPS is, a, is also a quality estimation tool. Um, it's an AI tool. Um, it is not based on uh, LLM specifically. It is a, a very lightweight, scalable tool that is built on top of the quality technology around MTQE um, with both improved performance over what we were seeing previously with MTQE and a much more granular scoring. Critically, what we're trying to do with QPS, where I've mentioned previously MQM and the scoring range from zero to 100, we have tried to design QPS to match the range of scoring and to match the output of the LQA process, such that you can see that scores are aligned across the platform and you can do LQA with humans and you can still do it in, in, in different areas of, of the platform and understand when you're seeing the QPS scores that align um, what, what is the value at different points of the pipeline and how they can be compared to your LQA uh, results. So to provide some alignment and unification of the framework across the platform. Um, just to mention very, very quickly, uh, performance. Um, I've mentioned that it's an improvement on MTQE. And in particular, we've carried out experimentation internally to suggest that QPS is competitive as a quality estimation tool at state of the art and broadly provides accurate prediction of MQM scores at scale. So I'll pass you back across to Dan now, who will explain where it sits uh, in the product suite. Thanks so much, Craig. Um, so now we will talk about the specific implementation of QPS in our various products. And we will start off with uh, the phrase TMS. Uh, as Craig mentioned, the phrase TMS is no stranger to uh, AI-based quality evaluation. In the past, we had a feature called machine translation quality estimation. With the launch of QPS, we've replaced this. And um, all instances where MTQE was previously surfaced are now surfacing QPS scores instead. The intention with a QPS in the phrase TMS is that we empower both linguists and project managers. Um, the QPS scores that are shown are again shown from uh, the band of 0 to 100 using the MQM framework. This is different from the MTQE scores, which were previously shown in four different bands. Um, in the context of the TMS, the QPS scores enable more efficient post editing as linguists working with the editor with access to these granular scores are able to make judgments based off of how much effort is required to post edit various segments. It also helps project planning as project managers are able to get overviews of the scores and also enables custom workflows as it is now possible to automatically, conf uh, automatically accept segments that reach a certain user specified quality of threshold. So this is how it works in the TMS. In phrase strings, uh, AI-based quality evaluation is a completely new feature that we've introduced last December. And the focus here is on the linguist experience. So the scores are shown to the linguist directly in the editor, again, in the full range of zero to hundred and are intended to enable um, post-editing of machine translation, but also the, uh, the review of human translation. One of the key differences in the implementation of QPS in phrase strings the phrase TMS is that in the strings context, users are able to get QPS scores for human generated translations as well. Uh, our hope is that these will help speed up uh, the content review and the post editing. Third product that I'd like to mention today is, um, is the phrase language AI via API. Uh, phrase language AI is a set, uh, is um, a series of AI based features uh, that we have currently supported in the TMS which we launched as an API product last year. Um, in the context of this product, QPS uh, enables better raw, raw machine translation workflows. In, in, this, um, in phrase language AI via API, it is possible to get QPS scores on document level uh, via the API, which will provide you with instant quality insights for the content that you're translating. Uh, this is great because one of the key problems with machine translation is that if you're translating at scale, you oftentimes can't review everything. Uh, but being able to have these instant insights for the documents that you translate allows you to quickly spot content that just uh, that might not be good enough for your particular use case. So content that you might want to uh, send for human review or content that you might want to retranslate. 
So uh, these are those three specific implementations. Now we would like to share with you a demo, which will show uh, how QPS uh, looks like in phrase TMS and in phrase strings. I hope you enjoy it. So let's take a look at how this works in practice in the TMS. So I've created a test project for QPS and uploaded a file, the same slide deck that I was just showing you. And we're gonna take a look at what this means for firstly the linguist and then what it means for the project managers. So as a linguist, when I open this up, I will see something uh, that seems quite familiar if I know about MTQE, which is scores on the right-hand side. We've been showing scores here before, but what is different now is the fact that we show scores from all the way from zero to 100. So linguists are able to see more granular scores. One of the differences they might notice is that uh, there is no color differentiation in the same way that there was before, that all these uh, results are now show, shown in a beautiful shade of blue. Uh, this is a new default, but this can be customized via the preferences where users can go to appearance and then uh, restore back a score-based coloring, which um, changes based off of where the score is. So going through going through the segments, uh, linguists will be able to see the score for any given translation, and then be able to make judgment calls based on this. Now this is it for the linguists. What does this change mean for the project managers? Well, one of the first first important changes is that MTQE was previously used in uh, the analysis and QPS continues to be used there. So what we can do is generate an analysis that will include machine translation matches, which is QPS. Generate this. And then we can see a quick top level breakdown of the different scores. So we can see it's included in this analysis and we can have a look at the various score breakdowns. So here we see it banded in various categories. We can see that most of the segments here about 88% fall into the band of 50 to 74. And we can see that about 11% fall into the category of 0 to 49. Um, so this helps us as a project manager to get a very quick overview of how the post editing would probably be required for this project. Um, but we can also use this information to create a sort of custom, uh, custom thresholds. What does this mean in practice? Well, we can see this if we Go to pre-translate. Uh, we're going to just quickly delete all the translations and then pre-translate. And then we can see that there is a new option that we've added here, which is set segment status for, uh, to confirmed for machine translation matches that meet a specific QPS threshold. Uh, so here, as the PM, I can put in any threshold I want. Let's say that we will put in 70. Then we will make sure that this is clicked on. We will pre-translate. And then we will see that as a linguist, if we take a look at the project, any segments that exceed a score of 70 set by the PM have now automatically been confirmed. So this is a good way to kind of distinguish, um, to, to kind of expedite the post editing to make sure that linguists don't spend uh, time on segments that uh, might meet your required quality thresholds. So those are all the major changes in the TMS. So uh, we've jumped over to a project that we have in phrase strings, where we can see uh, certain translations which have already been generated using machine translation and have already been scored. So here we see the original English and here we see the German translation. Um, we have also a new thing here, which is the QPS score. So this has been identified as a score 67. Uh, which shows us that this is probably probably not too bad, but might need a little bit of attention. What we do see immediately following this is a QPS score 8, which is something that as a linguist I would immediately want to take a look at. And I think that we don't have to speak uh, German to be able to figure out what the issue here is. So this particular uh, string refers to phrase strings, the product that we are currently in. And this has been translated literally uh, as phrase and then strings as one word. Now, obviously we don't want this and we would want this to be translated properly as a brand name. QPS recognizes this, which is why I scored this so poorly. 
Now we can see what uh, the this, this scoring looks like in practice if we find, for example, this string over here, and we can add a translation. Now I will not attempt a translation myself. We will instead show this using Bashi translation provided by Microsoft Translate, which has uh, suggested this particular translation for the string. We can add it in, and then we can save it. At the moment we save it, we will see that a score has been generated. Now, I personally can't judge whether 54 is an accurate score for this, but that is up to the linguist to decide. So that is it for the practical demonstration of QPS in phrase strings. So I hope you enjoyed that short uh, demo. I've been told that at one point during it, you're able to hear uh, my dog barking. So if you heard that, I hope you enjoy that. Um, now we're going to just do a very quick summary. So why is QPS uh, great for your workflows? Well, the most important thing is that it provides instant quality insights. Uh, the benefit of QPS is that it's able to reduce the time necessary to review, uh, to review your translations, and this reduces your overall costs, allowing you to spend your time and resources more, effic uh, more efficiently. Uh, the second important thing is that it enables automation. Uh, so we saw in the context of the TMS that it's now possible to automatically uh, confirm certain segments that meet your pre-required quality thresholds. And this is something that we want to extend on further as we develop QPS. Another important thing to know is that QPS introduces data consistency across the phrase suite. So we now have one standardized way of assessing translation quality available both in phrase strings, uh, phrase TMS, also, of course, the phrase language AI via API. Now, one of the truly uh, exciting things about QPS for me is that this is not a product that is uh, finished or um, that will never change again. In fact, it's something that is continuously being improved and developed and something that will um, allow us to release a range of interesting AI-related releases later this year. To give you a sense of some of the exciting things that are coming, I would like to hand over again to Craig to give us a bit of a sneak peek. Yeah, so at the highest level, um, one of the first and, and, and most uh, interesting things for us, and we're continually working on QPS as we work to understand this performance, as we throw it out into the wild and get customer feedback on it. Uh, we're very interested in it and, of course, improving, improving the performance of, of the underlying model. Uh, I've mentioned that we've done some testing that established this uh, state of the art for the time being, but things move quickly and, and technology improves. Uh, we'll keep that up to date as much as possible. We're also interested in exploring new use cases for it. I mean, the, the idea that you can get uh, automated uh, quality information at scale and have that global transparency is very, very interesting, not just for understanding translation quality, but, but other things as well and, and finding other opportunities where having an automated score at a global level will provide interesting possibilities for tackling new, uh, in new and interesting use cases. We're also uh, interested in providing more options for analytics and uh, monitoring. Um, there's, uh, we, we are, the, the data that's generated by QPS is available in aggregate through, uh, through the Snowflake connector. You can already uh, get a table that and Dan has demonstrated that they, there's some visibility on that already, but we wanna go a little bit further with that. We wanna provide uh, meaningful metrics that uh, aggregate in different dimensions and tackle some of the uh, the interesting use cases and, uh, and expectations of our customers. And then also in the future, we're, we're investigating, um, and there's a, a, some interesting questions here about like how we tackle um, like MT evaluation versus human evaluation and things like that. And also the subjective expectations of each, of each customer and the individual needs of each customer as well. We're very interested in looking at opportunities for, for customization of the score. How can we adapt the score to a particular use case or domain or customer or content as well? Those are just some of the things that we're, we're hoping to work on soon. Great. So if this uh, webinar has you excited about QPS, I have some very good news for you. If you are currently a customer of Phrase using Phrase TMS or Phrase Strings, you're already able to use QPS today, um, as, as seen in the demo. If you are not currently a customer of Phrase, then I would encourage you to book a demo with our sales team. Uh, you can do so uh, following the QR code here or going to the link phrase.com slash demo. So uh, now that we've, we've talked about QPS, we've seen it in action, uh, we would like to give you an opportunity to ask us some questions and for us to answer them. So let's move to the Q&A section. 
Now, I think we we started off today's session by asking our viewers actually a question where they're where they're joining us from. So I see that we have uh, number one uh, London and a few other uh, great locations as well. Uh, happy to see that this is a truly international webinar. Um, Craig, just out of interest, where are you joining us from today? I, I'm based in uh, uh, I'm based in Pittsburgh, actually in the US. So you can probably tell by my accent that I am I'm British, but no, I live I have a wife and kids in in Pittsburgh in the US. Yeah, so I think excitingly a very very international webinar. Um, so I think now we can go and have a look at some of the questions that have been coming in. Um, and uh, a lot of these questions, I think, are, are quite uh, technical. So, so um, I think Craig will be answering quite a few of them. There's a few questions that have been asked, which uh, maybe are a little bit too detailed for the context of this webinar. But we will try to answer as many of the questions as possible after the webinar as well. So if you don't see your question up here, don't worry. We will get to it. So let's start off with a question from Matt. Uh, how much can QPS scores be trusted as being accurate? Now, Craig, um, you mentioned um, some quality evaluations during um, your part exactly. of the presentation. Yeah, uh, and this is something of a of, of a uh, an open and explored question, right? Is that we understand that um, we're introducing an AI tool. Um, it's of course not as accurate ever as human evaluation, and an AI is famous for 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 messing things up at times. However. Uh, there's a trade-off being made and that we're providing this translation quality evaluation uh, transparency at scale. Uh, and we, we understand that there is value in being able to see these scores in the aggregate such that, um, that those kind of inconsistencies get, get uh, eaten, uh, averaged out. Um, but uh, we have done experimentation internally, as I've mentioned, that, uh, that demonstrates that the model behind the scenes uh, is competitive at state of the art. Um, and uh, we're obviously actively uh, interested in improving it as well. Great. Thank you for that question, Matt. Second question coming in from Constantin. Um, this is, again, I think for you, Craig. Uh, would mm -hmm. you like to outline what kind of model powers QPS? Yeah. So uh, the, of the information that I can give on this, I, I can confirm that it is uh, uh, based on a multilingual pre-trained model. Um, so a very similar architecture to other comparable types of quality estimation tool that are competitive at state of the art at the moment uh, in the market. Uh, the one thing I wanted to use this question to highlight though, um, it, it is not based on generative AI. It is not an LLM, it doesn't use ChatGPT. Um, and the, uh, the, kind of the interesting follow-up question to this is why are we doing that? Uh, you know, why wouldn't we just use ChatGPT? Um, and the, question, the answer to that question is in scale. Um, is that we are interested in providing transparency at scale. Uh, large language models in particular aren't that scalable at the moment, at least. Uh, and so what we have behind the scenes is a much more lightweight, scalable model. Perfect. Uh, next question coming in from Claire. Uh, do you also plan to display the types of errors as per MQM type typology? Now, obviously, this is a very exciting use case, and it is something that we are definitely very interested in exploring. And without uh, giving too much away, um, you might want to stay tuned to some of the releases that we have planned for later this year. Yeah, I, I'm very excited about this, but I do want to add the clarity that the, the model behind the scenes is a regressive model that predicts a score. Um, so it is based on, in the background, it is trained on LQA data using the MQM typology. So it sees uh, something of the information from LQA but it isn't producing the, the error types uh, at the moment. Great. Next question. Is there any way to customize QPS using metadata of each customer? Um, so currently, I believe there is no uh, option to customize QPS, uh, but this is a thing that perhaps might change in the future. Uh, yeah, I, hopefully I made it clear in the in the kind of the next steps for QPS that this is an area that we're very, very interested in and, and absolutely Keep your eyes peeled on 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 future announcements um, because uh, that's that's definitely of, of interest to us. We understand that that's a that's an interesting uh, direction. Uh, so the next question I think is uh, one of the questions that we now see often asked about AI. Um, are your features designed to replace translators? So uh, I believe features here speaks uh, specifically of the AI features that we are developing. I'd be interested in your thoughts on this, Craig. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is a really this is a really interesting question, and I understand and I understand where this is coming from. I, I know that there is a lot of 
uh, discussion at the moment in the translator community in particular about the threat of, of incoming uh, AI uh, opportunities. Um, but, but of course, what we're trying to establish, and I hope I made this clear in the, in the presentation itself, that we are really, really interested in refinement of the human process. Um, we, we're absolutely not interested in, in replacing humans with, with these technologies, but providing opportunities to help the human process to, to scale. Uh, and to refine that process. And we hope that the introduction of the QPS score in particular in uh, workflows like in these strings editor and the TMS editor will be of help to translators and editors in particular. Um, so there's definitely an investment in the human process. Uh, it's not something that we're, we're actively trying to, uh, we're definitely not trying to, to replace translators for sure. Uh, next question, another interesting one about AI. Uh, errors made by machine translation tend to be different in nature from human errors. You mentioned that QPS works for both. How do you ensure the model can pick up both of these types of errors? Yes, this is, this is I, I actually really, really like this question because this is an area of research interest that, that I have uh, and the differences and things like translation ease and the idea that machine translation produces a particular style of output and how you address that in quality evaluation. And the answer really is in is in training and providing it with with sufficient data that reflects both human and uh, machine translated data. The extent to which we're successful at that is is still you know it, it's still up for question and and there's something that is actively worked on and explored. Um, but this is a very very interesting area of of machine translation and, and translation quality evaluation in particular that we're actively uh, looking at. But the concrete answer to the question is generally in in the data that you use to train it. We have a question from Matt. Uh, what would be the best way to validate QPS scores in order to set the threshold for not sending content for post-edit if the MT is good enough? Um, so I guess simply put, the question is, um, at what point do we know that the QPS scores are good enough? Yeah, uh, I like this question. It's a difficult question, I'll be honest. It, it's something that, um, uh, mainly because the, the, uh, the question of what is good enough is highly subjective. And, and for different customers with different use cases, this is going to change. Um, we have a general default set, I think, at 100. Um, so if, if, if within the TMS, if the translation doesn't hit 100, that it doesn't pass the, the threshold, that's intended as a default threshold, but um, it's something that, that um, is configurable to a degree and, and, and you can work with our, um, our teams to kind of figure out exactly what is a, a good threshold for your expectation. There is no silver bullet to this, and this is another very, very interesting area of, of uh, evaluation research that, that, that I have in particular is understanding the subjective nature of what is good enough and what that means. Um, so that's it's, it's a little bit of a difficult question to answer, but I hope that gives some uh, color to, to that at least. Yeah. yeah, I suppose we would encourage you to look into it yourself for your own particular use case and play around with the thresholds and see what works for you. Um, uh, yeah, just, just, to, just to clarify on that as well, that, that as we as we grow in understanding of the capabilities of QPS and its application and we get gather feedback from customers, we'll probably uh, most likely provide more guidance on, on that and adjust the thresholds and help customers to, to figure out what, what is good enough and where that, where that threshold should sit for them. Great. Um, another question from Constantin. What's the adoption level of the older quality prediction technology and machine translation quality estimation, MTQE? Are you keeping it? Um, well, I think this question must have come in earlier in the presentation. Uh, as mentioned, QPS has replaced all instances of MTQE in the phrase TMS. Uh, machine translation quality estimation was a much, much loved and, and used feature, but we hope to build on its success by um, extending access further to our other products as well. Great, we have a question from Ludwig. Uh, currently, I can only see the score for individual strings. Does this score also exist as an aggregate for the entire language across all strings? So the way it works in the phrase strings editor is that the scores are displayed only for specific strings currently. But there are plans to um, support surfacing this on the level of the project, project as well. Next question from Robert. Um, what does fully integrated mean here? Can we report on QPS through the analytics module, not advanced? Uh, so I believe this probably comes from earlier in the presentation where we talked about QPS being fully integrated in various uh, products. Uh, we've given you an overview of what that looks like in, in practice. So um, we've shown you some of the analytical options. And of course, we've also 
so that we plan to, to integrate it further. Great, we have uh, one more question. For those unfa unfamiliar with MQM, can you briefly explain the basics of how AI knows what is good and what isn't? I think this is a question really, for you, yeah, this is a, yeah, this is a great uh, detailed question. The, the answer is pretty complex, but the, the highest level explanation I can give is that when we train the model, uh, we take a, a multilingual fine tuned model that, that has some knowledge of language uh, uh, and, and across languages as well. And then we fine tune it and train it with uh, data that comes from LQA. So what we're, what we're concerned with taking is examples of, of, of translations where there was an LQA carried out and there was some assessment of quality given and giving the model, giving the AI model, lots of these examples to look at. So compiling uh, a, a data set of training data where we have a variety of different examples, good translations, bad translations, medium translations, um, with all sorts of different types of errors. And then we run those through the model uh, a number of times uh, and, and over time the model becomes familiar with the types of errors uh, and the types of scores that result from, from certain errors and develops its own kind of understanding of what, it, what is good and what isn't. Hopefully that's a, a reasonable uh, and understandable explanation. Great, uh, I think as a follow-up to, to your answer, um, we had some questions about, about um, the LQA data that was used to train, to train this model. Could you give us just a quick overview of- Yeah, um, a, a variety of LQA data. So we have internal data that, that we are, uh, that is, is permissible to use for, for, for training. Uh, that comes from some of our customers. Um, and we we also lean into public sources of data as well. So there are, are uh, more emerging data sets that are used to train uh, publicly available open source models, um, such as data coming out of the workshop for machine translation and shared tasks there, where they generate publicly available uh, MQM data. And uh, that's also um, something we look at too. Great. Well, thanks so much, Greg, uh, for your excellent answers. And thank you, everyone, for all of your questions.